Hi, welcome back to Garden Ninja. Now today's video is going to be a review of a Bosch cordless robotic lawnmower. How's that for futuristic? Now it's the Indigo S Plus 400 and Bosch have sent me one to trial out here at Garden Ninja HQ to report back to you on how I found the mower to fare. Now if you're short on time and you want someone to mow your lawn when you're not in, then maybe a robotic lawnmower is for you. But first things first, let's have a look what's in the box before we move on to trialing out the product. Let's have a look inside the box and see what you get with the Bosch Indigo S1. So if we open it up, put this first layer, and by the look of it, we've got a charger, which is there. We've got some instructions. We've got a length of the wire cable that allows you to set the boundaries, I believe, as to where the longer can go. We've got a number of pegs, which I'm guessing again allow us to fix those to the floor. They're all kind of bits and bobs. So we We've then got some more insulation guides, which will be useful. And inside here, we have the mower itself, Oops. and the docking station. So if we move that out of the way, put that down there. So this is the moment, obviously, and then you've got the docking station. Um, next, what I'm going to do is read the instruction book and then set off outside to attach this to the floor, put the cable in and power it up. So the first thing you need to do before you fit your charging station and your perimeter cable is make sure, conversely, that your lawn's already been mowed. And the reason for that is that the Robo mower is only made to take off small amounts. And it's been designed so that it will go out and about and do its thing at frequent intervals to keep the lawn consistently short. So if you're starting off like I was, with quite a long lawn, you need to give it a quick mow first to take it down so that the mower can handle it. And what will happen is each of those times it passes over and clips the lawn, the clippings will fall back into the lawn and they will be absorbed as basically like a light mulch. So bear that in mind that it's not going to be able to tackle huge long blades of grass. You have to start off with a clean pitch as it were before it will start to function properly. So I'm going to be trialling out the Bosch Robo mower here on this small area of turf and it's probably not too dissimilar to the majority of small urban gardens. Now what I need to do first is take this reel of wire and set the perimeter up. So the robo mower is on charge and whilst that's happening I need to take these pegs here and pin out the perimeter of the lawn. Now there are a few rules that I need to follow to ensure that the robo mower works correctly and that is to leave a 30 centimetre gap all the way around the turf that I want mown. Now Bosch do provide this handy ruler here which gives me all sorts of different measurements. So I'm going to go around 30 centimetres and pin the perimeter wire down and I will show you how to deal with obstacles such as this Philadelphus behind me which I need to make sure that the mower avoids. Now when it comes to obstacles like this bush here you're still wanting the 30 centimetre perimeter all the way around. Don't be tempted to try and make the mower go underneath because it could get stuck or it could start to snag on these branches. So it's really important that you map out the obstacles and use enough pegs to make sure that the wire is taut. Now in the manual it says it's better to use too many pegs, have them at a shorter distance than not enough because you don't want the mower to basically run over the cable. Now this is pretty time consuming but in the manual it does say that this is a one-off activity and once it's done, it's done. So I'm going to suspend my critique until I'm finished. It's time to attach the charging station to the floor. So I've chosen a corner position on turf and you get these massive plastic screws and an allen key which then screw into the four corners to make sure that it's secure. Before you do that you need to pass through your cable which then feeds into the back so you should have two ends of the cable by this point. You've laid most of it around the perimeter and now you've fed it through and you're going to then pin this to the ground. Aren't we Barry? You're not much help are you? 
One of my main wobbles with this is that by the time you've pulled all your cord through, you then have to use a pair of wire cutters to cut and strip the line. Now, I know that Bosch can't guess how big your lawn's going to be, but I'd like there to be an easier way to connect them because cutting wires and stripping them is not everyone's specialist skill. I've done it a few times before in the past, but even I feel slightly apprehensive and if I make the wrong cut, I may either have to relay this or order more wire because I might not have enough to relay it again. But anyway, fingers crossed, I'm going to do this now and then plug this in. The perimeter wire has been fitted, I've plugged this in and now the Bosch Indigo is ready to charge. I'm going to take Barry inside so he's not in the way and once it's finished charging I'm going to press the go button and it will go around and map out the perimeter. So come on, inside! So you can manually change the cutting height here using this button which allows you three settings from five centimetres all the way down to three. So three is the lower and five is the taller. So I pressed reset because I want it to be at the higher amount and because I want to see how it performs before I cut at a lower amount of maybe four or three centimetres. So I'm just entering the pin now on the screen and I press the green button, that's accepted. And it says, if you can see there, map garden. So I'm gonna press yes and what will happen is, hopefully, it will move out and start to map the area here that I've already cordoned off using the wire that I just showed you. So, here we go. So if you can see it behind me, it's now starting to map out the garden base on that cable that I've laid. It's going to slowly work its way around, map out the space, and then the next thing to do will be to set it off to cut the lawn, and it will then start to use random patterns as per the instructions to then cut the lawn. So the indigo has finished mapping out the turf that I wanted to cut. It's taking itself back to the docking station. It's actually quite cute the way it kind of like toddles around. Um, really quiet so far, but it's not started its blades yet. Anyway, there's a button saying mow now. I'm going to press that and then show you how it's going to operate on this turf and maybe do some time lapse to show you the kind of routes that it takes. So come on, this is it. Three, two, one. Oh, there's another countdown. The blades have started, fingers crossed, off it goes! <laughs> this is so weird. <laughs> One thing to note with the indigo is that it's actually really quiet. Mowing a lawn is usually quite a noisy activity, but you can barely hear it, which I think is actually a really big benefit, especially if you live in an urban area and you're going to be setting this off throughout the day. It's kind of like minimal fuss and noise, which I think is a really good benefit. The indigo can also be controlled by an app from a smartphone. So it's done its first pass. I've changed the height to three centimetres for a closer cut. And now I'm going to use the app, hopefully, to start it off and see how it performs now. So I'm going to click Mo, and then hopefully, there we go. Woohoo! Start your engines, let's go. It's 
suddenly seems a bit faster this time. I don't know if that's just my imagination there. I don't know why, but I do find the whole thing quite cute and comical, the way it just sets off and off it goes. But let's have a look once it's finished this at the cup quality and then my final thoughts on the Indigo Robotic Lawn Mower. So the cut quality on the Indigo is pretty average compared to a regular mower and that's in part due to the smaller size of the blades. On a regular lawn mower you've got far larger blades that can be sharpened to a more precise angle versus this Indigo robotic mower. However, for the size of it and the sound I think it's pretty efficient. Time for my thoughts on the Bosch robotic lawn mower. I think if you're short on time and you don't mind the price tag, it's a great bit of kit to have in your gardening arsenal to help reduce time spent maintaining your garden when you could be enjoying it. I think if you've got a very small garden, it's really useful. The downsides are setting it up can be a bit of a faff. I'm not keen on the 30 centimetre border. I think it looks a bit messy. I think for most people, they're not going to want to leave that for the meadow look, they're going to want to strim that, which leads to another problem in that if you're going to strim, you're probably going to have to make sure that you've buried that wire because if you cut it, then the lawnmower won't work. It did seem to work quite well against flags and cut a neat line up against them. But I think for around obstacles and edging, you're going to have to come back out with your strimmer and strim, which I know you need to do when you mow your lawn anyway, but if you're doing that, what are the chances that you might just want to use a lawnmower to mow your lawn as well? I think as a gadget it's got a really strong place in urban gardens for people that are really short on time. The technology is great, the fact that it does random mow patterns once it's learnt the layout means that you're going to get a really even cut on your lawn rather than regimented stripes with bits that may be missed if it was to follow the same pattern. So I think all in all it's a really good bit of kit. Is it for me? Probably not, but I'm a professional gardener so it's probably not aimed at me. But I think if you want to save time and you really like your gadgets, connecting it to your smartphone and being able to set it off when you're at work could be a real time save and benefit for you. If you've liked this guide, why not subscribe to my YouTube channel where there are loads more garden design, hints, tips and hacks to help you make your garden look awesome. I've been Garden Ninja, happy gardening.